When did you make the transition from out of the pool to open water swimming? Um, I still kind of dabble in both, but um, I will say like I started open water swimming when I was probably 12 years old and I have just been doing both ever since and I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. And you were living in Northern Kentucky then? Yes, yes. How did you get into open water swimming in Northern Kentucky? We're swimming in the Ohio? Um, we would practice at Williamstown Lake okay. and I think I fell in love with it because we would get to like boat after. So it was more so for like the fun time and then um, when we went to, we went to like uh, a little lake in Ohio mm -hmm. where we had our competition and it was like the Ohio LSC Open Water Championships and I think I won my first race and I was like, man, I'm, I'm good at this. I like it. Uh, so I stuck to it and yeah. What's the biggest difference between swimming in a pool and in open water competitively? Um, com so it's a lot more aggressive because there aren't any lane lines keeping us apart and um, it's you have to you have to change your technique a little bit. I have to look forward because there are like I can't see the bottom, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, it's just a different technique of swimming and um, a little bit more aggressive. When you say aggressive, what do you mean? Um, girls slapping you in the face. I've walked out with bl black eyes, busted lips. Yes, it is very aggressive. We're swimming on top of each other for about two hours. So like swimming is a physical sport. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. When did you realize this was more than a hobby, that you had an, a, a chance to be elite at this? Um, I think um, it was my second Open Water Nationals in Tempe Town Lake. I think it was 2017, and I ended up winning the Junior 5K, and it qualified me for Junior Worlds, so I got to travel to uh, Israel to compete. And so once that like happened and I won that event, I realized that there was longevity in open water swimming, uh, more so than pool swimming, and um, I loved it and got to travel for Team USA, so. What do you mean there's more longevity in open water as opposed to pool? Um, the age for open, there are 30 year olds that still do open water because the, the longer that you go, the more that your aerobic base still becomes strong within op open water swimming. So you can go for longer than um, pool swimming. It's, you have that age range and you usually stop at 26, 27 because you're getting a little too old for it. But uh, there are 30 year olds that just made the Olympic team for other countries. So. So you just mentioned you competed in Israel. I know you competed in Doha. We'll get to that in a second. Yes. Where else has swimming taken you? Um, all around the world. I've been to 13 countries now, and it's all been for competing for Team USA. Um, I've been to Seychelles, Africa, Budapest, um, Italy, yeah, uh, uh, Japan. Do the waters treat you differently depending on where you are in the world? Yes, absolutely. The roughest I've ever swam in was Portugal. Um, uh, yeah, you're fighting against current. One way was seven minutes slower than the other way because of the current. But um, yeah, each, each body of water is different. I've been to, when I competed in Israel, it was calm, it was flat, and it was almost like swimming in a pool. Mm -hmm. But then you get to those rougher conditions where you're fighting against waves the entire time. So, How do you train for the different levels of intensity of the currents? Um, there's not really a way to train because I train more just like any other distance pool swimmer. But I will say uh, I have a lot of practice swimming in waves at uh, IU because I, I train with the guys and I'm just fighting their waves every day. So that, that it's almost like a practice for open water. Um, so it's just a matter of keeping your mind calm and realizing that no one has better training for, um, for waves than anyone else does. So everyone's fighting the same condition. So it's just a matter of who can stay the most mentally tough in that situation. How do you balance pool swimming for a division one team in Indiana versus Team USA open water swimming? I'm lucky to have coaches that really um, put a focus on putting people on the Olympic team. Mm -hmm. So they sat down with me this year and just mapped out the entire year plan of, okay, so we're trying to get you ready for NCAAs, but the first priority, number one priority is to make the Olympic team. So I'm lucky that my coaches put an emphasis on that and are willing to work with me in that scenario to, to better both open water swimming and pool swimming for me. When did the Olympics become your dream? 
ever since I started swimming, ever since I started the the club team, uh, the NKSL for um, Florence Hammerheads, I watch Katie Ledecky and um, Katie Hoff swim in the Olympics, and I I didn't think that I was going to be able to do a flip turn at the time, but at the time I was like, I'm going to make the Olympic team one day, and so that's always been the dream ever since I started. How have you made life decisions around trying to find that spot on Team USA? I mean, my family has moved to Louisville to give me a better chance. Um, but we're back in Northern Kentucky now, but I mean, there's been so many different sacrifices that my family has made, and I love them for that, um, in order to just give me my best opportunity possible to make this dream a reality. Um, I, yeah, that's... You get to Doha the night before the race where you have a chance for your dream to come true. What was that night like in the hotel? I was actually like surprisingly really calm. I didn't think I was going to be able to sleep or eat the day before, but um, I think I got all of my nervous energy out the month before I left. And then once I got to Doha, I was just kind of at peace um, with the situation at hand. I knew I'd put in all of the work possible in order to get there. It was just a matter of executing my race strategy. And so I was at peace the night before I, the night before I raced, surprisingly. So you have to race 10 kilometers in water you've never swam in before. Mm -hmm. And you have your strategy, knowing that at the end, if you finish at a certain place, your dream comes true. Yes. What are those first few strokes like? Yeah, the first three laps, I just kind of, um, I shut my brain off a little bit. Uh, just because I didn't, I couldn't think like your brain is a muscle, right? Like I, I didn't want to worry my brain before I needed to. So I wasn't really focused on what place I was at. I knew, um, I had, I was in touch with the lead pack still. Mm -hmm. Everyone was still right there and we're all fighting for the same spots. So I just kind of turned my brain off and, um, just worked on the strategy that I set out with my coaches and, um, knew that the last 5k was the most important so so you were in that lead pack in that specific race first second third it wound up being a photo finish yes you're just concerned about getting one of those top spots yes when you slapped the board how quickly were you looking up at the at the leaderboard did you know where you were i knew where i was i knew i had made i had made the olympic team when i went into the finish shoot with 50 meters left um i you can't really tell like what place I got because of the uh, the video. Like I didn't know what place I was. I knew that I was in top eight, and that's all that mattered. Um, I didn't. I knew that I was out of the medal contention because I saw the top three girls in front of me. So um, it was just a matter of getting my hand on the wall and then finding my coach and my dad to celebrate with after. Those last fifty meters. Then you said you knew you made the Olympic team. What were those emotions like? Oh. It was indescribable. Um, it was kind of all a blur because I just wanted to go celebrate with my coach and my dad. Um, but it, it was just a dream come true, really. Olympians train their whole life for one chance. Mm -hmm. That's something that isn't replicated around any other sport right. and any other discipline. How do you describe to someone who will never get that chance to wear USA across their chest on the Olympic stage? How do you describe just how much that moment in Doha meant? It, it was just honestly everything. Um, everyone dreams of competing for Team USA and it really is just so much different than even competing for your college because you're because you're swimming for something that's bigger than yourself and you're swimming for your your country and fighting for medals um, to, to just make to just honestly prove to your country that you're about like your ability to compete right and so it's just uh, an awesome feeling what was your favorite phone call you got after you slapped that board um uh, well I got one from my mom and my family and they all uh, my siblings had their regional meet the next day but they still stayed up at 1 a.m. and watched my race um, so it was funny to hear my sister be like, well, if I swim bad tomorrow, it's your fault, okay? But um, past that, um, I got a call from my coaches and 
my teammates um, back in Indiana. They were at, pra at morning practice by the time that they had called. And they were all going to get French pastries after practice to celebrate my, uh, me making the Paris Olympics. So that was pretty cool, too. How has life changed since that moment? Um, a big weight has been lifted off my chest of uh, just, just the, like, I've been trying to qualify for a year now, uh, basically since last April. Uh, um, and so it's just a like, feeling of relief, but then also um, a different kind of pressure of also trying to hopefully qualify in the pool events mm -hmm. um, and put my best foot forward in the pool events and also um, compete well for my team at Indiana University for Big Tens and NCAAs and stuff as well. So. You just described a big weight lifted off your chest. You spoke a lot about you know, mental toughness the night before, clearing your head the first three laps in the open water. Where did you learn to have that kind of mental toughness, what, what it takes to become an Olympian? Um, that's just something that's been trained over the years. Um, I mean, I can remember practices of when I was 12 years old and crying, but my coaches told me that I could, that I could do it, and they gave me that confidence. And so ever since, I've just been fighting and, um, and just working hard at practice. It's honestly just hard work and determination that has got me to this point. What are you most looking forward to about Paris? Um, I'm most looking forward to getting my family out there. Uh, I haven't, my family hasn't traveled with me for like an international competition since 2018. So I'm excited that there are so many family members. There's probably 20 of us going out there to watch. So I'm excited that they all get to like experience this with me, so. Is there a specific part of the games you're most looking forward to? Um, I'm most looking forward to obviously r racing on August 8th is the 10K event. Um, just after that performance in Doha and realizing that I was only four seconds away from meddling, I, I, this is a reality that I could end up with a gold medal at the end of this games. And so from now until then, I'm just gonna put my head down and work hard and um, hopefully come out on top. What is the goal? The goal is to win a gold medal at the Olympics. That's always the goal. And that's attainable? Yes, I, I believe it in my heart. If you think back 10, 15 years, the little girl in Northern Kentucky wants to make the Olympics and now you realize there's a chance that you make the podium. Yeah. What would you say to her? I would say that it, it's honestly just a God thing to me. Um, my faith is super important to me and um, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God um, and for the family that I have. And um, so to little Mariah, I would just say, keep the faith and keep on pushing and <laughs> you'll get there eventually, so yeah. There's so many little girls and little boys across the country who have that exact dream from the first time they get into a pool. What's your message to them? My message is to just have fun with it. Um, I, I would still say that I still have that little seven-year-old love for the sport of swimming. I get giddy every single time I get to swim, it, it, whether it be in open water in a different country or just even back at the, my pool that I practice at in Bloomington. Um, and it's just because I have so much love for this sport and it gives back. So just um, to all of the little kids out there that are doing sports and dreaming of being in the Olympics one day, just keep the love for the sport and just that's the most important thing. What's one thing the casual viewer, fan, or someone who likes to watch the Olympics doesn't know about open water swimming? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of things because I don't think that a lot of people like realize the, the intensity of the sport. Um, it's definitely, it's, it's like the marathon of, sw of swimming pretty much. And so there's a lot of endurance that goes into it. Um, they definitely don't understand the aggressive aspect of it probably. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a long, grueling event, but um, it's very rewarding in the end.